Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Alex and today I am going to do a video on frequency crystals which are the ammunition for energy based weapons namely beam lasers and pulse lasers. This video is a re-recording or a remastering of a video that I just done previously but had uh, some audio issues with it. Namely the the narrative voice was way too low in comparison to the ambient sound. So now, hopefully this will be a lot more clear and will be a lot more helpful. Okay, so frequency crystals and lasers. Who doesn't love lasers? I mean, to be able to scorch the skin right off of your enemies is just, it's just a wonderful feeling. And the Amara Empire agrees with you. The Amara Empire basically are the guys that come around your neighborhood and just try and convert your girlfriend to their way of thinking and will toast your car in the process of doing it. What nice folks, yeah. Anyways, to help commemorate that, this is a my ship here. And strangely enough, one without the lasers, this is actually one with missiles, on the Amar Battlecruiser class uh, prophecy. Yeah. But in general, almost all tier one or tech one amar ships use laser weapons of some sort either lasers or drones and a few are weapon agnostic again such as the prophecy here so anyways i'm going to open up the regional market window here and as i did with the other two videos i will describe the ammunition here for laser turrets and laser weapons and we'll go through them. Now, a couple of characteristics about lasers. So lasers have some advantages in comparison to its brother and sister weapon systems, namely hybrid weapons and projectile weapons. Lasers only use capacitor energy to fire. That is actually, their ammunition is actually your capacitor. That's why Amar ships have the largest capacitors in the game. So really, when we're talking about the ammunition here, what we're actually talking about are the crystals that are inserted into the laser weapon and give it its unique characteristics. And those characteristics can change based on the ammunition, namely the crystal that you have loaded. So that being said, the major advantage for energy weapons is that they never run out of ammunition. You can just keep firing and firing and firing and firing assuming you have the capacitor energy to maintain that rate of fire. So while other ships of other empires, when they run out of ammunition, they have to stop and reload. And in hybrid, it's not too long, but in projectiles, it could be quite long. It could be a good 30 seconds. I'm going off memory. That may not, may not be true, but it's, it's a significant factor when working with projectile and, and hybrid weapons. But with energy weapons, you don't run into that problem. Another thing about energy weapons is that if you switch your crystal, it switches instantaneously. It's like a half a second. And bang, you're already using your new crystal, and you don't have that reload factor that comes in. This is what makes a marships particularly good at long-duration sieges. So the Amar Dreadnought, for example, the Revelation, can sit there and be happy as a clam firing its mega lasers at a citadel, a structure, or a poco, or whatever, and never have to worry about it actually running out of ammunition, which can be a real concern for other ships, particularly if that structure is well fortified. So similar to hybrid ammunition, frequency crystals operate along a range. Yeah. So basically, the attributes that really change for a frequency crystal is the optimal range that you can get, whether it's an increase or a decrease, and the capacitor usage that that crystal is going to use. Now, jumping in here, I'm going to just put this out front. All the crystals here that you see in the standard section, and I'm going to use medium just like I did with the other ones, 
from gamma to infrared, all of those have some sort of capacitor reduction bonus, except uh, for multi-frequency. Multi-frequency multi is the only one that does not. That one uses the full amount of capacitor to fire its, uh, its weapon. So one of the keys of being an MR pilot is capacitor management. Yeah? Capacitor is life, and that's especially true for an MR pilot. So if you have a laser weapon that is consuming too much capacitor, you have to be able to know which crystal you want to switch to in order to become much more efficient with your weapon system to maintain your capacitor level or even increase it while running other modules you know, without taking the huge hit of firing all your weapons. Okay, so that being said, uh, some questions that will always keep in your mind is how far your opponent is from you, how much damage you're going to do, and how much capacity you're going to consume while doing it. Okay, so this range starts from the maximum range to the minimum range. And what is the crystal that gives the maximum range? Well, it is radio. So we're going to start with radio. So radio, right off the bat, gives a range bonus of 60%. So this can really reach out for a long distance, but you're going to use quite a bit of capacitor doing it. So the capacitor need bonus is minus 15%. That's not a lot. So I know when I was a brand new Mar pilot, um, or my main character when I switched to Mar ships, I thought, okay, well, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, lead or iron for uh, hybrid weapon systems. I'll just load the radio in, and I don't have to worry too much about capacitor. Well, no, yeah, I did, because it actually consumed quite a bit of capacitor. The other thing to keep in mind is the damage type. So radio is purely EM damage. Great for shredding shields, not so much against armor. So a strategy or tactic that you can use with radio crystals is that you can use this from afar to really shred down an opponent's shields or weaken their shields quite significantly. And then when they come close, you can switch to a more damaging crystal while their shields are still down. So that is radio. Very good, long range, EM damage only, and it can be a bit taxing on the capacitor. Next up on the list, and this goes in order here, is microwave. So here we go. So now you'll see that these kind of move in step increments. So microwave, the range bonus reduces by 20%. Well, the capacitor need bonus increases by 10%. So it went from 60% in optimal range down to 40% and a 15% capacitor need bonus to 25% capacitor need bonus, which is a pretty significant. Opening up microwave here. <clears throat> so here the EM damage does drop down to eight, but you pick up four thermal. And this is quite useful. Thermal, do not forget, across the board, is the best nor normalized damage type in EVE Online. If you can do thermal damage, then all things being equal, you'll probably do more damage than some of the other types. But again, it all depends on the target you're shooting at, depends on the resistances, yada, 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 yada. You know the drill. But keep in mind, having thermal damage along with EM damage is pretty nice. This is gonna be quite deadly against shield systems, but keep in mind though, for all laser systems, you're restricted to two damage types, EM and thermal. They do not do kinetic, they do not do explosive, which makes sense. It's a beam of light, yeah. There's no physical matter being tossed at the target, so to speak. So microwave, it's good, and it's not a bad one to keep loaded inside your laser turrets, even for travel. Yeah, it's a good opening up weapon if you're not at extreme range. Okay, so next up on the list is infrared. Infrared gives you a 20% optimal range bonus. So again, it drops by 20%. Now we're 20% increased range bonus. Now you get a 35% reduced 
capacitor need. This is quite efficient. And so you get 10 EM, so it goes up to 10 and four thermal. So the nice thing here is, is that your capacitor need is actually going down. Your damage is going up. So your crystals are becoming more and more efficient with its damage per unit of capacitor that is being used. The hit, of course, is in range. Now you're down to 20%. This is a significant decrease in your range bonus. Now keep in mind, this is gonna have different effects with regards to beam lasers, which is the longer range weapon system, or pulse lasers, which is the short range weapon system. The thing about pulse lasers, though, is that out of all of the short range weapon systems, i.e. pulse lasers, autocannons, or blasters, that are guns, the pulse lasers actually have the largest optimal range of the short range damage systems. So with these type of crystals, infrared, microwave, and radio, you can actually reach out to medium range with a high damage weapon system. So that's a pretty unique thing about Amar. They can reach out quite far with a short range damage system. Surprisingly so. People that think they are out of range, they are not. They're actually in range and they keep getting hit with damage even when they think that, that they're safe. So those three crystals, radio, microwave, infrared, those are your range extending crystals. Those are gonna be your sniping crystals at range, great for beam lasers, but also good for pulse lasers. So if you listen to my other two videos with hybrids and projectiles, they're usually fairly distinct, the short range and the long range weapon systems. But here the long range crystals can really find a home in the short range weapon system because it can extend out the range to 20, 30 kilometers or more. While as other short range weapon systems are restricted to 10 kilometers or less. Okay, so similar to the other two weapon systems, there's like a ammunition that's in the middle that gives great capacitor usage, very, very efficient for capacitors. And that will be, if I can find it here, that will be standard ammunition. So standard ammunition, it's probably well-named. It is the standard right in the middle of the spectrum type of ammunition. No range bonus but a 45% decrease in capacity. Now that's huge, particularly for energy weapons where it can be very, very uh, taxing on your capacitor system. This is a good crystal for Amar ships that do not have the capacitor bonus, the capacitor usage bonus for energy weapons. Abaddon, I'm looking at you. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of others as well, but this one, is really it's, it's essentially vital it's really needed for ships that do not have that bonus because if that bonus is not there then their capacitor will disappear yeah so for any mars ship that's going to be running active modules active repair active prop mods active whatever i highly recommend you keep a set of standard crystals because if you want to keep firing you need to be able to husband and protect your capacitor to a high level yeah, it also does pretty good damage. 10 EM and 6 thermal, nothing to laugh at. You know, thermal goes up by 2, so it's a good damage spread. Overall, a good crystal and one that I would recommend. And again, if you find yourself starting out at close range where you need other active modules, I would say keep standard crystal as your default loaded crystal if that's the type of uh, fit that you're running. Okay, so now that we've gone past the middle, now we're gonna go into the short range crystals. These are the ones that are gonna have a reduction in optimal range. So one thing to remember again, is that optimal range is crucial for weapon, laser weapons. Yeah, laser weapons do not fall in, do not fight and fall off. Projectile does, hybrid to a lesser extent does, but laser weapons do not. For laser weapons, it's all about the optimal range. And so that's one key thing to look at. So starting things off, we have ultraviolet. 12.5% reduced optimal range. Not too bad. Not too bad. But a nice 34% capacitor need bonus. So very efficient. 
a slight hit on the range. The, e e the EM goes up by two. Okay, so you do get more EM damage. Okay, maybe it's not the thermal damage that people would like, but it can be quite damaging to shield systems. Very good against shield ships such as Minmatar and Kaldari. And it can be also quite effective against structures that can have that hole there. Next, going on the scale, you're going to see this kind of move in the same direction. It's going to be a 10% decrease in optimal range and also a 10% decrease in capacitor usage, which is a benefit. Yeah. So next up is X-ray. You get 25% reduced capacitor need, which is nice. Okay. But you're going to start cranking out more damage here. Yeah. So even though, yes, you are getting capacitor need bonus, as I mentioned, as you go down the line here, that bonus is actually shrinking. Yeah. So you're going to be using more and more capacitor. The range bonus penalty is going to increase, but your damage is also going to increase. In this case, EM of 12 and thermal goes up by 2 to 8. So this is a pretty decent weighting right here. Pretty good if uh, if you can land fairly close to the enemy and you got a good healthy capacitor to, uh, to lay the damage on. This is a fairly damaging crystal. Next up, Gamma. So Gamma is no joke, but higher on the EM damage, 14 EM, 8 thermal. So this goes up the EM damage ladder. Very good against rats that are weak to EM damage. Yeah, but again, that range bonus now comes at a punishing 37.5. So this is where you're really gonna feel it. And the capacitor need bonus is now down to 15% uh, capacitor bonus. You're gonna be running near full capacitor at this point, but you do get some benefit. This is uh, a crystal where you don't want to be running too many active modules at once. Then last but not least, multi-frequency. A punishing minus 50% penalty to your range. So you're gonna have to be very close, very close range. And that's not too much of a problem for a Marship. So for Marships, they have very good tracking on their weapon systems, particularly their pulse lasers. And they typically have the armor to back it up to be at close range. Yeah. Now the thing with multi-frequency though is that the EM damage does not increase, the thermal goes up to 10. Yeah, so this is a very good PvP crystal, but if you're, again, if you're fighting against Sancho rats and things like that that have specific holes against EM, you may want to consider sticking with actually Gamma rather than multi-frequency, because the multi-frequency, even though it's small, having that capacitor uses bonus is nice, you know, even if even it's a small one, and the thermal damage is not going to tip the scales that much. But a lot of people, when they go to do pve you don't want the highest damage crystal it is well, okay this one clearly is the highest damage but again you gotta look at your damage spread and see what rats you're weak to yeah if they're weak to em then you want to stick with em if you're for example fighting serpentis for example and their hole is thermal then you then yeah you want to use multi-frequency so those are your standard crystals for energy weapons and energy weapons, again, everything's about optimal range because they have the shortest fall off. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you, you use these crystals. Do you need the, all the crystals? Well, you could easily carry them. You know, you only need one set of crystals because they don't break. Yeah. But it can easily get confusing in the heat of battle. Okay, well, which one should I use? Which one do I use? I would suggest carrying three sets of standard crystals. You want a capacitor maximization crystal. So I recommend a set of standard. Standard crystals, I'd keep a set of standards. Uh, you would probably want a long range crystal. So that could be either radio, microwave, or infrared, yeah, depending on your ship, where you think you're gonna land, all that good stuff, how much capacitor you're gonna use. You, know, you can kind of make that, that judgment, but any one of those three would be good, but if you're not certain, I'll probably go with microwave. And then you want a short range one, either ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma, or multi-frequency. Carry a set of multi-frequency. You know, PVP 
is always going to be a possibility. This is Eve. There is no safe Eden of PVE only, you know, even in high sec. Carry a set of multi frequency crystals. Sometimes you got to get down and dirty. Yeah, especially if you go into low sec. So carry a set of multi frequency for PVP. Yeah. Um, other short range crystals, again, depending how many active mods you got going on, you can make the judgment between UV, X ray, and gamma. Uh, if you have a lot of active mods going, then you probably want to stick with ultraviolet. If you don't have too many active mods or you have a uh, nanite fed burst armor system uh, that isn't going to consume too much capacitor, then you can get away with like a gamma or even stick with multi-frequency. Okay, so those are the standard crystals. Now we're going to go to the Tech 2 crystals. Faction crystals, of course, they are the same as standard, but they do more damage. But they're more expensive, of course, because they require loyalty points. Typically, though, if you're going to do PvP, people load up on the faction crystals. Now, the thing about faction crystals, advanced beam crystals, and advanced pulse crystals is that unlike standard crystals, these crystals do degrade. Okay, They don't degrade quickly, but they do degrade. So, and they cannot be repaired. It will say damaged, how much it is in a percentage basis. It starts off slow. Like you see 1% or 2%, but as the percentages creep up, the rate of deterioration of the crystal also accelerates. Okay? So 1%, 2 5 even 10%, 10 20% is not a big deal. When you start getting near 50%, though, you're going to see it accelerate. Yeah. So, advanced crystals. What do you use where? All right, well, let's start with beam crystals. These are your long-range crystals. This is for your sniping, of course, and similar to the other ammunition types. With the other weapon systems, hybrid and projectile, you have a long-range ammunition for your, um, in this case, beam weapon. And you have a short-range high damage ammunition. So starting off with, you have Aurora. This is your sniping ammunition. Very long range extension, 80% bonus. Uh, and a very punishing tracking speed multiplier. Only 25% of your tracking speed. So whatever you're sniping at better not be moving. At least not much relative to yourself. This is very good for very, very long range because anything at very, very long range is not gonna be moving very quickly relative to yourself. But once they start to close the get range, this thing is gonna miss and miss and miss and miss, okay? So if an enemy even gets within medium range, you gotta swap these crystals out. Pretty decent damage spread though, EM and thermal at 10 and six. And so a full battery of eight sniping uh, guns with this crystal can, can put a lot of hurt in at a surprisingly long range. But for close range work though, let's say you know, you're in a ship, you have beam weapons, but you gotta take down a structure or a larger target larger than you are, where you just gotta lay on the damage, that's where Gleam comes in. Now these crystals, I do recommend keeping a set of each, you know, in PVP. You don't really need these, use these crystals in PVE. In fact, if you wanna save some money, you don't need to. But in PVP, you wanna keep a set of each as the circumstances change. And if you group your weapons together, you just need to click right click once and select a crystal and all your laser mounts will switch to that crystal. You don't have to do them one by one like in the old days. So here, you do get a tracking speed bonus of 25% because this is kind of a close range ammo for a long range weapon system. Now it's not gonna turn your beam weapon into a pulse laser. Yeah, it's not gonna do that, but it does help a bit. Yeah, And you're gonna take any help you can get. A very punishing 75% reduction in range. So again, this is close range on a long range weapon system at a target that you need to get close for. So you're going to lose that advantage of being at long range. So you're going to be expecting return fire. Yeah. Also, if you notice, there is no capacitor usage bonus. Yeah, so you're firing full capacitor. In fact, even if you look at the graphic, you'll see it is the multi-frequency crystal. So you're going to be using full capacitor bonus. So this will eat through your capacitor very, very quickly. But look at that damage, though. 14 EM, 14 thermal, an even split between EM and thermal. Great PvP damage. Yeah, I recommend it on any fit that's going to go into PvP. And you're using beam lasers. Okay. Now, last but not least... We have the close close range 
pulse lasers. Um, the ammunition of choice here will be conflagration and scorch. So we're going to start off with scorch here. This will be the long range ammunition for a short range system, in this case pulse lasers. You do get a track and speed penalty of 25%. So that's, that's going to hurt. But again, you have a lot of tracking speed because you're a close range weapon system, but it is going to slow things down. You are going to start to miss if that target has a more transversal velocity relative to yourself. But a very nice 40% range bonus. So you will hit out quite far with your pulse lasers, amazingly far. In fact, the edge of where this can shoot will kind of be the starting range of a long range weapon system. Yeah, so you can cover that range fairly well between a short range, medium range to long range. Yeah, you can kind of fill that gap. But look at that damage though. 18 electromagnetic, four thermal. So this will definitely shred a shield, but once the shields are gonna go down, this could struggle quite a bit. You may wanna switch back to something like a multi-frequency, a gamma or an X-ray, if the target you know, comes in quite a bit close, or even a standard ammunition. Again, this is a long range ammunition. Yeah, but, the, but if the enemy comes really close, then you'll want to switch out of this. Last but not least, conflagration. This is the close range ammunition. And look at this. Range bonus, minus 50%. That's gonna hurt. Tracking speed multiplier. There's a 30% penalty to your tracking speed. So now your guns don't track as quickly, even though you now have to close the range even closer. So orbiting a target could be a bit tricky with conflagration. We didn't see this in some of the other damaged uh, advanced weapon systems and their ammunition. Okay, but that is the case here with beam. So if you're gonna or orbit a target, you do have to keep in mind that you cannot orbit very close range at high speed. You could start missing, unbelievably. And then the cherry on the parfait, you actually have a capacitor need increase. This is actually a capacitor need penalty. I don't know, it says bonus. It's no bonus. Yeah. It's actually increase in capacitor need. And let's just verify that. Yeah, 25% increase in capacitor usage. So you better hope you have a ton of capacitor, but look at that damage. 17.7 .7 split evenly between EM and thermal. This thing will melt anything you shoot at. But again, the key thing is it's also going to melt your capacitor if you fire these crystals for too long, unless you have um, capacitor boosts ready to go or you have external logistics to keep your capacitor going. If you have external logistics to keep your capacitor going, fire away, pal. You're going to just destroy and melt anything you shoot at. But if you don't, you could very well find yourself with an empty capacitor and not even know it uh, with conflagration. So do be careful with this crystal. But again... For your pulse lasers, your T2 pulse lasers, I would recommend having a set of both for PvP. Again, knowing which one to load in when is the key to being a good PvP pilot with a gunnery system. It's instantaneous damage. You can get critical hits. You can just really destroy a target if you have the right ammunition. If not, you're going to miss. You're not going to be able to track the target. And you could be in a very big world of hurt if you also burn out your capacitor yeah so anyways that is my review for laser weapons and frequency crystals i hope you enjoyed it i know i learned a lot by going through these guys and looking at every single particular ammunition and even redoing it here so you get some better audio quality it was uh, a big help as well i hope you enjoy this feel free to let me know in the comments below what you think and we will go from there. So I hope you enjoyed this guide. I hope to help you, and as always, fly safe.